today we're going to do a little bit of target training with our Argentine black and white tegu. Uh, here in my hand I have his target, which is basically just we use a colored tennis ball on the end of a pole. Um, the target is doesn't matter what it really is, as long as he knows that he needs to come to the target to get his food. Um, today's food reward is bits and pieces of some egg. So he's actually kind of a carnivore, kind of a herbivore, so he fills that omnivore role in the wild. Um, as they get older, they start to shift a little bit more into the carnivore role. But today we do have carrots, uh, peppers, eggs, and uh, I think some sweet potato. I will ask him to come to the target. And basically he follows the target right to his food reward. So the reason we do targeting here, um, this gives him something to focus on during feeding. Um, that way he doesn't get distracted out by uh, anything, um, doesn't go after shoes accidentally or anything like that. And then it also makes him think. Uh, we want to make sure that not only are we taking care of them physically, but also mentally. And right now he's kind of biting the target, which is not what we want him to do. But he's still kind of learning. Um, and just like with us, sometimes you make a mistake, and he's just going to kind of work through it. Right now he decides that he wants to play tug of war with it more than he wants to do a training session. So we often get asked um, if, you know, because they're a reptile, if they're smart, or they're just kind of these big, goofy, slow animals. Um, tegus are actually incredibly smart. Um, one of the smartest groups of lizards. And that's why we are able to do this kind of training with him. Um, we can ask him to follow the target around like this. And uh, basically, if we want to move him, say, into our back of house holding space or into a transport crate, we can do that without having to physically restrain it. So that makes it a little bit easier on him. It makes it easier on us. Um, it just kind of cuts a lot of the stress out for different husbandry procedures. Um, if I want to get up close with him and take a look at him, kind of do a quick little physical exam with him, we can do that as well. We can ask him to move in between different areas of the exhibit while we're doing things like cleaning. And uh, that kind of just helps all around. It also keeps him active. Uh, we often get asked, how old is he? How big is he going to get? Um, right now, he is just over a year and a half old, and he is about, I would say, two to two and a half feet long. And because he is a male tegu, he will um, he'll eventually get to be about three to potentially four or even four and a half feet long from the tip of his nose to the tip of his tail. And he's followed the target, so we'll give her a reward. And he will weigh anywhere between uh, roughly five to eight pounds as an adult. Um, so they really have a lot of length to them, more so than weight. One of the noticeable characteristics that you'll see on our tegu is because he's a male, he's kind of got those big jowls around his chin. Um, those are actually uh, something that they use in the wild when males are fighting over reproduction rates with a female. Um, they'll typically be biting at each other. So those jowls actually kind of act as a protection for their throat, which is going to be kind of that very sensitive, delicate area. And they've got to keep that protected. So by putting kind of big fat reserves there, they can help protect their throat. And then additionally, it kind of shows to the female, if he's got these big jowls, he's in good body condition. He's got lots of fat, and he's been doing really well for himself. These guys, uh, while they are native to Brazil and South America, um, they're actually an invasive species in Florida. So um, if you go down to the Everglades, you'll actually find them down there. They're not supposed to be down there. Um, they've probably been released as pets. People will get these little cute baby lizards, and as they get bigger, they don't have a place for them anymore. So they start releasing them in the wild. Because they're not supposed to be there, they've actually been listed as an invasive species, and they're kind of becoming a big problem for Florida wildlife. They're actually out-competing other animals. They're uh, 
basically replacing the natural predators and the, the prey are having a really hard time uh, dealing with a new animal in that environment. 